All right, uh, head coach of the under-23 team. As we all know, MLS Next coming up, the Dynamo now have in-house, essentially their reserve team, their under-23 team. They have named their coach. It is Kenny Bundy, who has been with the Dynamo Academy as well. And Kenny joins us now. Kenny, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Glenn. Well, this has to be a blessing in disguise for the Houston Dynamo organization to finally now have a reserve team, you know, bridging that vital gap. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think number one, you know, when when this whole project was announced, it, it was it was about 18 months before it actually kicked off. And so I think there were rumors floating around that this is what the league wanted to, to transition to. And, you know, it was an interesting idea. I think there's still a lot of questions and there was a lot of questions when it when it uh, when it was proposed. But now that it's here and, and we actually have an opportunity to um give our talent an opportunity, which is something you'll hear me say a lot, is, is how do we give our top talent opportunity? Um, it's really exciting. I think we had a really good run with RGV, and that was a project that, you know, again, I think in that space, it was really important that we tried something. Um, but now having it in-house and obviously having the players side-by-side, -side, training side-by-side, -side, the connection with the first team, it's a huge opportunity for us as a club. Yeah, that was always challenging down in the Rio Grande Valley to, 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 to really offer that to you guys. Okay, so now you've got this vital piece. You've got pros that can drop down and play with these younger guys. You've got this opportunity for them. You're monitoring players better. You've got all the organic that comes with it, which is basically, you know, I'm looking at the field you're on today, and, and literally across the field, they will be looking at the first team going, that's the place that I have to get. So how much of this is important when it comes to simply that organic nature and having everything in one area down at Houston Sports Park to you? I mean, that's, listen, that's the biggest piece, to be honest. I think we're very fortunate because there are clubs that, you know, they're 30, 40 miles away from their first team. And, you know, that, that, that presents all sorts of other issues or uh, logistics pieces but for us being in-house and you know minus the rain we're on field three the gates open up directly across it allows players to move back and forth um, it allows uh, our staff with the dynamo two to meet with the first team staff every morning and every afternoon talk about players talk about different training sessions talk about what's coming up um, and i think that only closes the gap between our young players and first team players exciting stuff kenny bundy now the under 23 uh, head coach um, and of course, these guys are going to be traveling just like a professional soccer yeah. player around the country. Um, is there anything else from an overview perspective you can give us about the under 23 league? I guess it's called MLS Next. Is that it's what called it's called? MLS Next Pro. Pro. So okay. they're, they're trying to link it, obviously, with the, the academy that we have now. So MLS Next is the MLS platform for the academy. And then MLS Next Pro is the professional league going into MLS. So yeah, I mean, I think everybody probably saw the, the, the guidelines that came out, those publicly came out. Um, I think there's a lot of pieces to, st uh, to still work through because, you know, we're going to have a different array of players, players moving up, down. Not every team in the MLS is in it for the first year. So obviously, I think in, in, in a perfect world, everybody thinks if the first team travels to Philly, then the second team travels to Philly. But with not having every team in it, it it'll make a, a challenging schedule for the first year. Um, but the bottom line is, is it's a professional league. And I think the under 23 has been been used, but there is no age limit. So if you find a, a guy that has MLS potential and he's 24, 25, and maybe in and out of uh, USL, you, you have all the right to go and grab that guy if he fits the model that you want. So it's an interesting league because it's a balance between these young guys and getting them what they need and creating that professional environment, but also putting them around guys that can close the gap to what it is to be an MLS player. So why would you want a 24 or 25 year old guy who's been in the USL, probably not going to make the first team roster in major league soccer. I get it from the guidance standpoint, but aren't you going to get that from the first team from guys that haven't been playing or maybe are coming back from injury? Yeah. I mean, I, and again, I'm just giving that as a hypothetical because I think the U23 moniker has been put on it and it's not necessarily that. So you might see that in the league. Um, I think for us, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it's been really important that the guys that we're looking to bring in that aren't our young homegrown players are guys that bring experience, that bring leadership, 
and that will push the younger players in training because, you know, again, I, I think the number one thing is we, we don't ever know who's going to come down. Right. And we don't, we don't always know who's going to be available to play. So creating a culture in dynamo two that when guys drop down and when guys move up, that culture is set there. And it's an easier transition for those players from moving from other teams. Kenny Bundy joining us here, the under 23 head coach of the Houston dynamo exciting uh, that there is this, I'm, I just, I go old school. I just call it a reserve team um, yeah. because it makes a little bit more sense to me. Yeah. I can't remember all the names, but I call it a reserve team. Um, you know, how much of this team is going to mirror what the first team does? And, and is that something we can even expect this quickly? Because let's face it, uh, it's a pretty fast thing that's occurring here. Yeah. I mean, I, ideally, and I'll, I'll just leave it at this, and I don't want to be too general, but our goal is, and you'll hear me say this a lot, close the gap between what it is to be a young player that's not a professional or is a, a young professional to what it is to be a seasoned starting player playing in PNC, winning games for the Houston Dynamo. So a lot of it is mirroring what the first team does, but we also have different personnel on any given day. So, you know, again, I think that the, the benefit of what we've done here, you know, with Paulo coming in and with the staff that he's brought in, he's been in this environment. So he understands what I'm going through and what the, the Dynamo 2 staff is going through. Um, that being said, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with him for the first two weeks, get a real clear idea of the verbiage he uses, the style that he, he has. Um, we're very connected in that. I think that's a, that's a blessing for me is that we see the game the same way. Um, so it's been a great integration into it. But, yeah, you know, for us, mirroring it to to the t is always going to be difficult because you you may see three games in three weeks and we may have three completely different lineups but strategically we're making sure that we're giving opportunities to to the key players and that that's what's important um the other big piece of that is opportunities aren't going to be given i think there's going to be times where you know guys are going to have to out train guys no matter where they are within the club uh, which is a good competition to have because you know, stature or age doesn't really mean anything um, unless you're performing and unless you're training hard. So I think that that uh, mirroring effect will be there, but it will be it will be adapted based on the players we have. Kenny, uh, looking at the training session today, it's mostly academy players. There's some college players, I'm assuming, that have graduated. Um, yeah. You've got some guys that have already committed to college. So ultimately, when they go, um, th they're not going to be eligible to play for the under 23 team. That's my understanding. But yeah. what's the build up, uh, build out of the roster look like? And, and will you sign some of those 23 or 24 year olds that may just come in simply to be guiding younger players and, and, and helping you guys uh, move along in the league? It's a great question because I think the one thing that we've tried to do is also learn from some other MLS teams that have had USL League One teams or USL Championship teams and try and formulate a model of success that they've used, um, not necessarily take one team and say, okay, this worked and this is what we're going to do. But I think, I think what you'll see from our group is you'll see some really, really promising young players in our academy that people don't know about. Um, I think everybody sees the tweets and sees that we sent four players into the last U-17 national team camp, right? I think people, if they have followed a little bit of the academy, they've seen that with this pilot league U-23 team, we went to three or four games and had really good results. And you'll see some players that are a little older in the academy on the field. You'll see first team guys coming down. And then you will see um, college players that were projected potential to have first team potential um, that will be in that mix too. I think it's really important for us that, you know, uh, college is still a massive gap to the MLS and it can be a good tool for some of these guys that may need these prof this professional environment. But, um, you know, the makeup will be, will be a blend of that. And again, on any given weekend, it could be heavier on the academy side. It could be heavier on the, the older guys that have graduated but not gone to college and stayed with us. And then, maybe heavier on the first team side. And I think that's, that's the beauty of this project is, well, the beauty and also the, the work is making sure that you're, you're getting that development from every player and you're giving them opportunities that they need at the right time. He's Kenny Bundy, under 23 head coach, has been involved with the Dynamo Academy 
All right, there's some players that are coming in from around the country that are teenagers um, that are bypassing maybe their local teams, the LA Galaxy, Real Salt Lake, whatever. Um, what's the intention behind that? Uh, how does that get perceived by the youth community? I mean, obviously they're talented players. That's why you want them. But then again, we're in a city of seven or eight million. And, you know, some people might say, hey, why are we going outside of Houston, Texas and the, and the metropolitan area? to find players, are they that good? And then how do you attract them to come here? Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you know this as well as I do, Glenn. I think um, this area and this city, it's, it's, it's one of the hotbeds of soccer in the past and even into the future. Um, not only because of the, the numbers of number of people we have here, but also because of the, the amount that the sport means to this community. You know, I've, I've been here going on seven years. And I think that this is this is a community that thrives on this game. Um, you might not see it all the time. You might not hear about it all the time. But there are some unbelievable players that have come out of this and some that I've played with that have come through. And that was 20 years ago. Correct. Um, but I think I think the, the challenge for us is obviously as the game grows and there's more opportunity, um, you have to evolve as well. And I think what the academy has done over the last three, three and a half years as far as starting different uh, younger clubs around uh, around the city. So the Catalyst program that has, you know, six locations for the young kids to partnering with some of the clubs so that they, they want to send their best players to the professional environment. Um, I think that's really changed everything. And then, you know, as far as why are we able to recruit some of these top talents across the country? Uh, because the club is changing. I mean, it's hard sometimes – from the outside to see the incremental change that happens. But, you know, I can, I can tell you from my experience, everything has started to progress much faster. And the guys that we might've been losing three or four years ago, we're now getting without them even taking another visit. Um, that has a lot to do with staffing. That has a lot to do with the ownership, has a lot to do with the front office. Um, but also I think that we, we have a clear goal and the goal is to produce as many young professionals as we can. So. You know, I think you, you, people may see one or two of these guys coming in, but we want top talent here. And top talent, it helps the young guys that we have here as well. The, the stronger our teams, the better individual players to become. And I think that that's, that's really important that we will get the best players at some point. I think we've got some of the best players, if not the best players um, in Houston in certain age groups. Um, but there's still guys out there. And you're still fighting. You're still finding them every day. Some of some of the other youth clubs in town are producing unreal players. And I think as those relationships strong uh, strengthen, you'll be able to see that we're producing more of those professionals. How do you strengthen those relationships? With because there is a point. Listen, we're, we're not going to yeah. beat around the bush here. And and I've had yeah, this yeah. conversation with Paul that there are a lot of people that are anti Dynamo. I hate to say that it shouldn't <laughs> be that way because. You know, going to a stadium should be part of player development because of things that have been done in the past. And I'm not branding anybody, but how do you make it, you know, hey, we're the pro club, but we want to work. And using the word that's the word of the day is collaboration with the youth community. Mm -hmm. And look, you I know you you just said something very respectful to the youth community and their coaches and they're great coaches out there. I know that I've been mm -hmm. a part of it in years past. Um, yeah, how do you how do you deal with those guys uh, on equal terms? Because I think ultimately they're going to want to organically move their their best players at some point to the place where if they've got professional ambitions, you guys are going to help consummate it. Yeah, it's trust. I mean, let's be honest. I, and again, I couldn't be more general there. Let's be honest. That that's you know I use the word trust. I mean that that means a lot of different things. But I think it's trust, and I think. One of the great things about bringing in Dynamo 2 is we'll see more young players play. We'll see more young players get these opportunities. And I think that, you know, if you are able to bring some of these youth coaches, these youth clubs in and see that there is a clear player, player pathway and we're developing young players and the opportunity is there, I think then it opens up more of a conversation, right? And I think that Paul um, has done an unbelievable job of, trying to connect the community and he's done a great job of connecting the community, but it's not something that I think happens right off the bat. 
you know, some people are, are really willing. Some people have past things that maybe make them a little hesitant, but it's a process. And I think if we're all self-aware that it is a process and we keep working at it, then we're at least closer than we could be. Um, it's not always, you know, the first time you ask for a player that you might get that player or the first time that you try and help a club, they, they want help or they want, they want to be a part of it. But, you know, it's just the trust that we're trying to do what's best for these kids. And, and, and that's my ultimate job. My, my, my job is to produce first team players. Um, how we do that, it's, it's not linear. So <clears throat> anybody me. joining us, the under 23 head coach, this is very uh, frank and open conversation. I really like that. Is there a way you guys could be, you, you could pull off and I've, and I've asked Paul this too, pull off competitively trying to grab and get their players that early and just let it flow to you guys. I mean, look, you've got a lot of talent there. You've got players. You now have this reserve team that, you know, you may not be getting these players from around the country without the reserve team. The, the soccer community is educated. The better players are going to go, wow, I could be in the Dynamo Academy and I could be getting minutes on their Dynamo 2 team, right? That's something yeah. nobody else can offer. Yeah. Nobody yeah. else can offer. So yeah. that piece coming in, I mean, that, that in itself can be a recruiting tool on its own. Yeah. And, and to be honest, that's, that's why it's massively important for us. I mean, you know, again, it's, it's not just, <clears throat> but that, that, that's also something that I think the kids we already have are seeing. And you can just see the excitement that, sure. you know, we have some really, really good players at, 13, 14, 15, and now they're seeing the second team train and they're seeing the players that are playing on that and they're going to get to go to Aviva and PNC and watch and watch the second team play. All of a sudden, you know, that light, it's much brighter because it, it sometimes is hard to think as a 15-year-old, what do I need to do? What's my path to get to the first team? It's easy to say. It's hard to see. I think now when you go to Aviva and you see a kid who's maybe 16 years old playing in a professional game, you see, you see them giving, being given opportunity. You see them playing against pros. Um, now, all of a sudden, there's a tangible goal at the end of it, and that's the, that's the path. So it is, a, it is a big recruiting tool, but for me, it's a real opportunity for some of these guys. But it's organic, I mean, I, too, right? I mean, I mean yeah. it's, it's incredible that you just said, you know, your 13- and 14-year-olds, now they can see this stuff on a daily basis simply because of the insertion of that under 23 team. And it really sows everything you guys are working hard at together. So I'm going to ask you the ultimate question. And I yeah. ask Paul this a lot and you, you know, we know what the fans want to see. Yeah. They're great with the programs. It's exciting. If you're participating in it, you're in it. Uh, your parents of kids that are in it, but what fans want to see is when are there going to be more Houston kids running out of that tunnel? When, when are we going to sell a player to Europe? They see San Antonio FC selling Gallegos. They see what's going on in Dallas. This is all natural. When do you think that time is going to come? And I, and I know it's a tough question, but you've been there long enough. There's got to be some players on the brink of signing first team contracts and then maybe going even higher. Yeah. I mean, that's, if you had, if if I were able to give an exact timeline and get that right, then I would I would be the most sought after person in the country because I think that that is that is the question that we all ask. Now, I think the ultimate goal that's the ultimate goal. So I'll, I'll take a step back and I'll I'll tell you very simple what my directive is. My my directive is to produce first team players. We're we're going to do that in a way that develops. We're going to do that in a way that is hopefully exciting to the fans. So Kenny, they... can I just stop you there? Because, yeah, because I just want to insert something real fast. Is there a go. timeline on that? Kenny, we need first team players two to three years from now. Uh, we need it three to four years from now. Is, is, do you guys have a vision and a timeline of when you think that should turn? Yeah, I think, I think right now, you know, I have my own personal one. I have, I have my own goals. I think, I think from a, from a club standpoint, you know, this project being brand new, it's a, a bit premature to go and say, okay, in two years, we need to do X, Y, and Z. But I think that for, for me, it's been very clear from top down, it's to produce professionals. And so, you know, for me, two years, we should see real development 
and the potential for players to be there. Again, there's so many circumstances that can happen. But my goal is in two years, we, the, the, the fan base, the club, they should really be excited about a handful of players of being future Houston Dynamo first team players. Um, you know, that's, that's about as detailed as a timeline is, you know, we really want to well, go in depth said two on this years call. And I look at you out there with a lot of talented players that I saw today out there training and, uh, you know, guys that I'm going, oh, wow, you know, there's some real nice things here going on. Um, and we're talking to Kenny Bundy, the under 23 coach. I remember Tab Ramos saying he thought there was a couple on the fringe as well uh, when Tab was here. Um, before I let you go, uh, I just want to ask you, do we have an idea of when these games will be played? I know it doesn't start till the end of March, so you have yeah. time to build out your roster and everything. Do we have an idea of, of like the nights these games are going to be played? Will there be some, is there the potential of preliminaries before an MLS game? Is anybody considering that? Yeah, it's, it's a funny thing because um, that's probably the trickiest part for the MLS right now, in my opinion. I'm just speaking for myself because in an ideal world, you would want to allow players that don't play to play in these games. Um, with COVID and with some of the, the travel, with some of the teams not having teams, you know, I think that they're going to do the best that they can to get that. Um, but I think that's probably the biggest piece that they're trying to figure out right now, which is, okay, when are we going to play these games? Are we going to play these games? Are, are we going to do a back-to-back -back game if it's an afternoon game? Are we going to do a Sunday game if it's a Saturday night first team game? Are we, you know, going to do a Saturday morning game if it's a Saturday night game for the first team? I think all of those things play into it. And the one thing I will say is the MLS has been very good about it's all player driven. So when these decisions, I know everybody wants to schedule, we do as well as everybody else, but I do think the real, the real focus for them is this is not just thrown out there and not considering player development because that's what this is. And, you know, I think, I think there's a lot of ideal circumstances for me. Um, I really hope that we get a good fan base. I really hope that people embrace this and they embrace the fact that these young guys feed off of being around a crowd and, and being a part of the dynamo. But I also think it, it helps with the professionalism. If we are at Aviva and we have 4,000 people there and we're putting our top under 17 on the field and there's noise that just gets them one step closer to what a real stadium is going to be like. So, you know, maybe it's after a game, maybe it's the night before, I, I, but I really hope that there is an embrace from the community that this is such a big piece of the development of these young guys, um, having that atmosphere, having that excitement. I think if you get 1500 out there, you're going to have a great atmosphere. I think that's Absolutely. a wonderful environment. And, and the, just, just one thing to, to maybe uh, add to that, you know, that was one of the things I thought about when the USL championship was kind of being dropped because you were traveling to, you would be traveling to different markets with different fan bases, you, yeah. you know, maybe a little bit more of an edge. So, so the hope is, and I think this is what you're saying. You, you also, these teams in MLS that are in their under 23 have to create environments also that are going to help grow and, and polish these kids and put them under a level of pressure. Um, you know, you just don't want a homogenized, very sterile two teams playing with nobody there, right? I mean, that that's yeah. a big issue, I think, right? It is. It is because there's nothing like, I mean, let's use Juan Castilla, for instance. You know, there's nothing like Juan Castilla walking on the field for the first time last year and playing his first minutes in a hostile environment. You know, they're, 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 you, can't, you can't build a tra training session that, that gets the guys ready for that. I can't, I can't put an exercise together that gets them ready for for playing in Dallas, right? And, and there being an environment in Dallas where everybody wants you to, 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 to lose. I think that's what I really hope that this league brings is, and I think it will, where there's a real buy-in from the fan base that these are the up and coming guys. And I hope everybody has an opinion about it. I hope people are, are as passionate about this as they are with the first team, you know, because ideally that will help us, that will help me, that will help my staff really teach that professional side of the game. And that's a huge part of it. I think we're on the, a new horizon of transparency, excitement, because we all know 
I mean, that healthy pressure is going to help your players. It's going to help yeah. you. And by the way, just your thoughts on being the under 23 coach. This is a great coaching accomplishment yeah. for you. Yeah, no, I mean, I couldn't be more appreciative of, of everybody, you know, Nick, Pat, Asher, um, Ted, John, for giving me the opportunity. I mean, I think, you know, for me, it's a huge project. Uh, it's something that I think I've been building towards, obviously, have, having helped the first team over the last couple of years and um, in the pilot season this year. But to, to actually get the opportunity and, and take on the pressure that is producing professionals um, for the first team, I, I think it's exciting. And I think people are going to be really excited about the staff that we're bringing in, you know, we're really, we're building a staff that is going to help mold these guys. Um, we're going to be very flexible because this is a, it's a flexible position. There's, there's so many things that go on during the week, but at the same time, it's really exciting. And it's exciting to be a part of something in a community that I think has, as, as really needed this. Um, you know, I had the BB Cavalry when we had that USL two team and just seeing the excitement that was around and we weren't even in Houston. We, we were out of college station. But I think that this is something Houston's needed. This is something that, you know, I cannot thank the ownership enough to invest in because it is a big project. It is something that you have to really sink your teeth into and say, okay, we're going to do this right. And the ownership and the, and the, the upper management, they have really, they've, they've done everything to make this as professional as possible. And it's been unbelievable. So um, I'm really excited about it. I think I'm ready. Obviously, we got to work the day the first team got to work. Uh, we have a long preseason, but you know we're going to grind and we're going to we're going to do our best. And at the end of the year, we're going to look back and we are going. We personally, as a staff, are going to evaluate ourselves on how close we got players to the first team. How many players did we get across the line? Um, in that, we want to win games. I don't want to. I don't want people to think that this is this isn't a big part of development. But at the same time, we are going to evaluate ourselves on how many players did we get across the line? How many players did we get close? You know, maybe at the end of the year, we look at the timeline and we say, OK, Glenn, now the timeline is this. You know, once the league is up and running and we see how it's going to be. But um, I'm really excited and I'm excited the teams in the MLS that have done it this year because we've got Sporting Kansas City. We've got Colorado. We've got Dallas, you know, and those are three rivals of ours in our conference. And, you know, those games are going to are going to be exciting because it's the best talent under a professional umbrella in a stadium um, with real with real uh, things on the line. Kenny, listen, congratulations. Best of luck with it. Let's uh, check in again. This is great stuff. I think player development is always something of uh, real importance to a soccer community here that has so many people involved in it, not only at the pro club with you guys at the Houston Dynamo, but. Uh, throughout the city and beyond. So thank you so much for coming on. Good luck with it. And uh, you're off to a good start. Yeah, thank you, Glenn. I appreciate everything you've done to kind of push the, the youth development in this city. You know, it, it's important. And the more we talk about it, the more people know. And hopefully the more people come out and see what's going on. Definitely do it. You will see me at a lot of games. That's for sure. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. All right, that's Kenny Bundy, the under-23 head coach. Wow, uh, this is a big, big development this year for the Houston Dynamo, having what I, I call it a reserve team, but it's MLS next. They will play in a league, and uh, Kenny's going to build out the roster here for the Houston Dynamo. Okay, we'll take a break. It's all brought to you by John Daspit and the Daspit Law from DaspitLaw.com. 713-322-HURT. Uh, They're bilingual, don't forget. And uh, all you got to do is give them a call. They'll take care of your case. And uh, we'll take a quick break here. We got more to come. Good stuff there from Kenny Bundy.